In this video, we're going to have a look at the method of differences for summing series, and we'll get straight in there with this question here. It says, show that r plus 1 over r plus 2 take r over r plus 1 equals that. So, pretty simple GCSE standard question, really. So, first thing we're going to do is just add the fractions. So, the denominator we get by multiplying the two denominators together. So, r plus 2 times r plus 1 is simply r plus 1, r plus 2, and that's the denominator. So the first term, this one here, we got by multiplying by r plus 1. We did multiply this denominator by r plus 1, so we're going to multiply the numerator by r plus 1 as well to get r plus 1 squared. Then there's a minus sign. In the second term, we multiply the denominator by r plus 2, so we're going to multiply the numerator by r plus 2 also. So that's equal to r, r plus 2 equals, so on the numerator we get r squared plus 2r plus 1. Take away r squared, take away 2r, all over r plus 1, r plus 2. And we see here that the r squared take r squared and 2r take 2r, which is equal to 1 over r plus 1, r plus 2, as we required. So a nice easy start there, so that was part 1. Part 2, hence find an expression in terms of n for that there, so a sixth plus a twelfth, plus a twentieth, etc, etc, etc. So what we've got to do is try and find some similarity between this expression here and what we did in the first part. Well, notice here that if r equals 1, so let's just write that down as a bit of an experiment, r equals 1, which means that the right-hand side is equal to 1 over 2 times 3 equals a sixth. I uh, want something there, so that's the first term. So I'm predicting that r equals 2 is going to give a 12th. Right hand side equals 1 over 3 times 4. Yep, yeah, we're onto something here. Let's just try r equals 3 now. r equals 3, which means that the right hand side equals 1 over 4 times 5. Yep, yeah, we've got it. So that's the sequence there. And if we weren't sure, just reading further, we'll see that that there is the same as that. So that should have given us the clue anyway. Right, but it's no real use as it is now. But what we've just proved in the first part is that of these fractions here, the subtraction of these two fractions is the equivalent of this expression here. So instead of using this one, we're going to use this one. So this was just a bit of experimentation, doesn't really have any bearing on our answer. So I'm going to delete this part here now. We don't really need it. So it won't form part of your exam answer because this is pretty much what's going to happen every time. So for r equals 1, let's sub it into this left-hand expression. So I get 1 plus 1 on top, which is 2, and 1 plus 2 on the bottom, which is 3. Take 1 over 2. No joy yet. But what I'm going to do now, and what I'm going to encourage you to do, is to write them not in a row now, but in columns. So now for r equals 2, we're going to add on 3 over 4. Take, for r equals 2, 2 over 3. Then, we're going to add on 4 over 5. Then take 3 over 4. Put the formula. Then, we're going to add on 5 over 6, then take 4 over 5. And we can see a pattern emerging here. So we're just using this formula here, subbing in r equals 1, r equals 2, all the way up to r equals n. So let's sub in n now. So we get n plus 1, so dot, 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 plus n plus 1 over n plus 2, take, and it was n over n plus 1. 
and notice the pattern occurring because here every term that appears here is cancelled out by its down and right diagonal so these two cancel these two cancel carrying on the pattern all the way down to there so all we're going to be left with in the end equals minus one half so that term's still there and we've still got this term here plus n plus one over n plus two and we've done it we've found an expression in terms of n now part three hence write down the expression for the sum to infinity so part three the sum to infinity so as n approaches infinity n plus one over n plus two approaches well as these terms get bigger and bigger and bigger the plus one and the plus two become insignificant so we end up with n over n which is one therefore the sum to infinity if this term approaches one as the terms get bigger and bigger and bigger s infinity is equal to minus one half plus one equals one half so this minus one half stays no matter what the value of n is this is still always minus a half and as this approaches infinity here as n approaches infinity the plus one and the plus two become so insignificant that the numerator and denominator become identical i.e n over n which is just one so a nice quick and to the point video um and it can't really get much different to this there's not really much variation in these uh, summations questions where we use the method of differences so that's pretty much it for more videos like this subscribe to our youtube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to a-levelmathsrevision.com.